Gone are the days of being a tourist, where you just go somewhere and sit around a pool or sit on a beach and take a photo and do nothing. Now there's this massive growth of, of people wanting to do stuff and you will travel hundreds of kilometers and thousands of kilometers on a plane and everything just to go and do this. And this is your holiday. You know, it's a holiday destination where you'll come and ride for days on end or weeks on end. Mountain bikers like to travel. They like to go and ride really nice trails. So that was the ignition point. Tazzy mate. I'm in Tasmania. I don't really know where that is, but I'm here. Um, just linked up with Hans. Came from Crankworx, New Zealand. He came from somewhere in Australia, and now we're here. We're gonna do some riding. So we're here for the next five days or so, and we're just gonna go out, spin our wheel uh, legs a little bit, and the wheels too, and um, and then tomorrow we're gonna go deep into it. Tasmania is part of Australia. It's a pretty big island that's south of Australia. It's its own territory. I knew very little about it until I found out a few years ago that, that there were some trails being built. How could you not? The mountain is just there and here's the town and the trail starts there, you know, and the mountain comes through the town. Wow. And it's just, it's made for it. It's a mountain bike. Like it's gonna be Australia's first mountain bike Town. This community here in Derby is a great example of how <laughs> mountain biking really rescued this old mining town, you know. We knew we needed to do things to revitalise the economy. We knew mountain bikes had the potential to do that. The Blue Derby um, project is a government initiative and it's driven by the Dorset uh, Shire Council. And they've got some vision and they knew mountain biking could actually bring some energy into, into the region. Before mountain biking came here, the Derby Township itself was fairly well dying. There was no industry. The mining and the timber had sort of left and uh, it's, you know, there wasn't much going on. And they were looking for an igniter and usually mountain biking is the first cab off the rank because it really does bring tens of thousands of people into the region. <laughs> Derby was a quiet little backwater town, not much happening at all. So there was that initial scepticism about mountain biking. What was it? You know, you're not going to spend millions of dollars and bring people in. They were really sceptical. And now all of a sudden, what mountain biking has done is drawn this amazing energy into the town. Uh, the locals here are really supportive of it. Um, a lot of them are involved now in businesses that benefit from mountain biking. Hans and, and Tyler being here validates that we've got a world-class product. I think Tyler had a good time. I mean, I couldn't see him, so I don't know. I just saw this, like, this bike just go like this, zip, in the distance, in the horizon. He was gone. That guy can ride. That guy can ride well. It's cool. Super scenic, trails everywhere. These guys did an awesome job building. Well, you know, I, I've known Tyler for a long time, and we are teammates on GT, and I thought it would be cool to have, actually, a hardcore rider with me to ride some easy trails. You know, anybody can enjoy these trails and a, a top rider might just go a little bit faster or see some different lines on the side that a beginner doesn't see. But at the end of the trail, the smile on everybody's face is the same size. Hans is a very defining person in the sport of mountain biking itself. And uh, he's just a really recognizable figure who everybody kind of has heard of Hans Ray in one way or another. And there's not many people who can travel around the world, be on an island in Tasmania in the middle of nowhere and have a recognizable face like that. I'm uh, pretty grateful to be on this trip with Hans. I, I think it would be cool if we tried to hit every single trail in the next couple of days they build yeah. and ride the mall ones. So there's, there's so many trails and loops you can do. And I mean, we just, the one we rode last night quickly was just like at the beginning. So yeah. I would imagine that all day. Signature section of World Trail Designs. It's not even trail building at this point, it's just like masonry landscaping work.
it's been blowing my mind how many different kinds of terrain are in this small area. One minute you'll be in kind of a rainforest feeling jungle with all these crazy tree ferns that are 30 feet tall. Then you come around a corner and you'll feel like you're in Maui. It'll be rocky, red dirt, kind of gravelly. And uh, it's just every corner you don't know what you're gonna see next. That's a big mama. Uh -huh. Crazy. You know, they're purpose built mountain bike trails that pretty much anybody from any skill level can ride. But uh, people such as myself and Hans can have fun riding them too, you know? Like, it could be a straight beginner kind of learning how to ride or people who have been riding for, I don't know, 40 years like Hans, who can uh, have fun on them as well. These, uh, there's a little bit of something for everyone here. The way these trails are laid out, it's someone who can be a beginner is gonna let off the brakes every time they feel a little more confident, you know, have a little more speed into a section and just feel the flow all the way down and it's not something you really have to work for. People of mine and Hans level can enjoy the flow as well as someone who doesn't even know what they're doing. They're on a bike for the first time and you know the, the way that World Trail lays their trails out, they're gonna feel that roller coaster feeling and um, every time they ride it they'll get a little get a little faster and get a little more sample of flow and the trail kind of just does it for you which makes it easy. Flow is something you know it's it's uh, for us it's got a lot to do with predictability. You're setting people up on a ride. They can commit at 100% and not guess what's around, oh, I wonder what's around the corner. Can I do this? Should I hit this? Should I hit this boulder or should I hit this rock? They know it's already set up for them to have a hell of a time on a bike. And yeah, sure, you still got to think and sure, you got to, you know, keep on the track and everything like that. But we pretty well look after 90% of the, the thinking for you. And that's what I believe flow is. So coming here, I was told how much of a legend Glenn Jacobs is, and uh, I'm kind of surprised I hadn't met him in the past. Mate, we are going to have some kangaroo burgers when we get to the pub. And I think... Some emu sliders for an entree. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some, some emu sliders and some wombat fish cakes and uh, <laughs> quite a few things. But the kangaroo burger is the one that's going to go down the best. Now he owns this company called World Trail, and... They just work on building trails all over the world. He thinks every town should have a bike park. He is definitely not only um, a legend for mountain biking in Australia, but really worldwide. In my personal opinion, in the evolution of free ride, he was one of the very, very first milestones. He, was, he did the first very, really free ride video, this whole free ride mentality, and that was in the early 90s, and he really invented the discipline of four cross. We've been talking about flow trails for many, many years, and what he's done with his trail building companies and places like here in Blue Derby is really uh, something unique, and he's just like, hands down, one of the nicest guys you can ever meet, you know, so. Glenn Jacobs is the man, Minchin power. Uh, the thought that goes into his trail building is pretty next level and just the flow they put into the trails. Uh, they put in a decent amount of rest before the climbs. Sometimes you don't even feel like you're climbing, you're just zigzagging around and then all of a sudden you're at the top of a huge mountain and you don't even feel like you were, you know, huffing and puffing. Yeah, just the thought they put into drainage and bridges and they definitely have a vision of what they want. Um, they go out and map it and then they, they build it exactly how they see it. The future for Blue Derby is, um, I believe it's going to be Australia's first mountain bike town. We've never seen terrain like this in Australia, and there's not many places like this in the world that has terrain like this. So we thought we, we're going to go 100% here. We're only at 60 kilometres, and by October we'll be at the 85 kilometres that we're looking for. And uh, we're already experiencing between 70 and 100 people riding the trails a day. The main thing is what we look at for a project like this is to reach a thing called a tipping point. A tipping point is where you can't ride all the trails in one day. You can't ride all the trails in two days. And you can just scratch the surface in three days, which means you have to come here and stay and you have to sleep in a bed and eat food and hang out and just absorb the whole Blue Derby experience. And uh, that's certainly happening now. We reached a tipping point a few months ago and uh, you'll be staying here nearly a week to ride all the trails. And when you get to ride every trail, you want to go back and ride your favourite one and then mix it up with another trail. So it's all come together for us. Very cool. Big Chuck lives up to the reputation. They did an awesome job building it. Lots of flow. Some gnarly beelines, gaps and stuff. I was like, okay, that's got to be the bottom. And then it just kept, kept going. 
It was like NorCal perfect wet dirt, but in some crazy fern jungle. Is this the future of mountain biking? I think it's one of the futures of mountain biking and the immediate futures. I think in the last like couple decades, mountain biking was predominantly um, influenced by the technology. But I think the next 10 or 15 years is going to be more like where and how we ride the bikes. And you're going to see more and more of these purpose-built trails, trail centers. This will open up the door to a lot more people who would have never become mountain bikers unless we have the right infrastructure for it. And that doesn't mean that natural trails will go away or that every trail in the world should be like this. I'm, I'm sure in a few years there will be a whole reverse trend towards old school natural trails, you know. And that's the beauty about this sport is that anybody can, or everybody can interpret it their own way and can practice it how they like and on what level they like. And that makes this sport so individual and so, you know, like endless possibilities.